Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today I want to look at a problem known as the Wheatstone Bridge problem. Uh, Wheatstone Bridge is a circuit, as I shown here, it typically uses four values of the resistance or resistors, and one of the values is unknown. In this case, the value of the unknown resistance is going to be this one, this value of Rx. Now, depending on the values of the three other resistors, it is possible to balance a Wheatstone bridge. And what that term means, if you read a question that says that the bridge is balanced, it basically means that the current flowing through this center branch is equal to zero. Now, you can either measure the voltage across points B and D on this circuit, and if that reading is zero, then there is no potential difference. There will not be a current flowing in that branch. Or sometimes you place a galvanometer. So you, this typically uses the letter G for it, and that's simply a device that measures current flowing through that wire. And in that case, if there's no deflection in the needle of the galvanometer, it means there is that the bridge is balanced. Uh, when the bridge is balanced, I can actually solve for the value of this unknown resistance. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you how to get the value of Rx in terms of the other three resistors. The other thing we're going to do, we're going to do a couple problems together. I'll give you three sample problems at the end. Like all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up if it was useful to you. Consider subscribing to my channel. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. This was a device to measure, a very precise device to measure unknown resistance values. Uh, before all of this uh, technology, nowadays all you do is you simply use a multimeter and you put it on both sides of the resistance and it gives you the value. Right? Before this technology existed, you actually had to use your brain to solve for unknown resistances. And that's what we're going to do here. All right, so let's get started. All right, so here's the circuit again that I'm going to consider. Again, I'm going to say that this bridge is balanced, which means that the current flowing down that center branch is zero. That means one thing, that the voltage between points D and B has to be zero. If there's any potential difference between both of those points, um, and if we have a kind of a wire linking them, there will be a current flowing through there. So it's very important here that we have this condition over here. And again, or that the current I through that center branch has to be equal to zero, okay? And this kind of depends on what measuring device you use. If you're using a galvanometer, uh, you can easily measure that the current is zero if there's no deflection in that needle. All right, so once we have established both of these criteria, what we're now going to do is we're gonna simply do some loops. We're gonna use the Kirchhoff's loop rule uh, in order to get to a relationship that allows us to solve for this unknown resistance. So first I'm gonna do a loop like this. And it really doesn't matter which loop you use. Um, we're gonna assume here that this uh, battery over here has an EMF uh, equal to E, and we're not even gonna use that. The loops I'm gonna choose are going to be this one, and then I'll choose this other triangle here on the right-hand side. So first things first, let's define some current values. I'm gonna assume here that the current uh, flowing through this branch here, let's just give it a name, let's call it I1. And let's assume here that the current flowing down here through resistance uh, R3, uh, let's call it I3, that's fine. Now have a look at the current. If I have a current I1 flowing up here, once it reaches this node that I've labeled B over here, if there is no current flowing down the center branch, if the bridge is balanced, that means that you're also going to have the same current I1 flowing over here, and you're also going to have the same current I3 flowing through this unknown resistance because there's no current in that center branch. Okay, so let's do the loop rule. Again, the loop rule means you add up all of the voltage differences across resistors, and if you go back to where you started, those should sum to zero. Okay, so let's do the first loop. Uh, the first loop, I'm gonna label it A, B. I'm gonna go down here to D, and then I'm gonna go back to point A where I started. So what would that loop rule look like? Well, the first thing I encounter is a resistor. If the current is flowing, through the resistor in this fashion, and I'm going in the same direction, that means there is a voltage drop across that resistor, and the voltage drop is I1, R1. It's given by Ohm's law. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go down the center branch, but we said if the bridge is balanced, there is no current, so there is no voltage drop across this point over here. So there's nothing else to add. The next thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go across the resistance R3. However, look at, I'm going across in opposite direction of the current which means I'm going from a low potential to a high potential. So the voltage difference now, it's important to have this negative sign here. It's going to be given by Ohm's law, I3, R3, and that there equals to zero. So that's my first equation. Uh, next equation I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna do this other loop. 
Uh, let's go ahead and kind of draw it out here. Let's start at point B and I'm going to do a loop on this side because I have to introduce the variable Rx somehow. So let's do a loop like this. So that loop would be starting at point B, C, D, and then back to B. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. The first thing I encounter here if I'm going around this loop is the resistance R2. The voltage drop across that resistance is I1 R2. That's the voltage drop given by Ohm's law. The next thing I encounter now is I'm at point C going toward point D. I'm encountering this unknown resistance Rx and I'm moving my loop as I'm going around it in the opposite direction of the current. So I go from a low to a high potential. Uh, and in this case over here, it would be I3 multiplied by Rx. All right, equals to zero. Now we're gonna rearrange these equations a little bit. Let's go back to one, I'll call it one star. And I'm simply gonna bring this second term here on the other side, just to write it in nice friendly, friendly form. We're almost done. Next thing, I'm gonna do the same step here for equation two. Just rewrite it a little bit. I1, R2 equals to I3, Rx. Okay, now what I wanna do now is eliminate the current values. And one way to eliminate the current values, notice I have I1 on this side. I also have I1 on the left-hand side for equation two. And on this side, I also have the same currents, right? I3. So what I can do, a simple way to kind of eliminate them is simply to do equation one divided by equation two. And I can do that, right? Because as long as these currents are not zero and they're not gonna be zero, I can divide by equation two. So what do we get if we do that? Well, we're gonna get R1 over here. We're going to get R2 over here. We're gonna get R3 here and our X, which is our unknown resistance, which is really what we're trying to find. So what I do now is I'm simply gonna rearrange this. I can bring Rx on this side, I can bring R2 on this side, and this equation here simply becomes Rx multiplied by R1 equals to R2 multiplied by R3. Now this is really the equation that we need in order to solve it. And I'll write it down one more time. The other thing I could do now is if I'm really just looking for Rx, I simply have to divide through by the value R1 and you're left with this expression. So if we know the values of R1, R2, and R3, and we measure that the current is zero through this center branch, that means that our Wheatstone bridge is balanced. And that condition is satisfied as long as our value of the unknown resistance, which I can measure, is going to be equal to this value over here. Now this might look like, uh, how do I kind of remember that without doing all these steps, right? If it's just a test, for example. Uh, what you wanna do here is if you look at the equation here in the red box, notice that I am multiplying resistances that are diagonal from each other, right? If I multiply resistances that are diagonal from each other, I get the equation here in the red box, and it's very easy to solve for the unknown resistance. All right, so let's go to the next page and we'll actually solve a problem to solve for this. All right, so here's my Wheatstone bridge problem here. We're gonna assume again that it's balanced. So this uh, voltmeter here is reading zero volts. How do we find the unknown resistance, Rx? R1 is equal to 15 ohms, R2 is 900 ohms, R3 is 50 ohms. So the way you do this again, you simply have to remember in order to solve for Rx, we need to remember the equation. It's very simple if you simply cross multiply the resistors that are opposite of each other. Uh, all you have to do now, just write down our equation. So this here would be R1 multiplied by Rx has to be equal to R2 multiplied by R3. Okay, so Rx, R2, R3 over R1. Now you simply substitute our values in here. Uh, R2 is 900. R3 was 50, okay, and R1 was 15. Uh, 15 goes in 90, six times. So we're left with 60 multiplied by 50. Now that gives me 3,000. So if Rx equals to 3,000 ohms, there will be no current 
flowing through the center branch and the Wheatstone bridge will be balanced. Okay, if Rx is any other value, I will measure a deflection. I will have a current flowing through down this center branch. Okay, so that's really what it means over here. Only for this specific value of the resistance will I get zero deflection from that. Um, no current flowing through that center branch. All right, guys, it's now time for you to practice the Wheatstone Bridge. Here are two simple examples. I've given you values of the three unknown resistance. Find the value of the unknown resistance uh, for each of these two examples, and then leave the answers in the comment section. All right, thanks for watching, everybody.